Good day, fellow geeks. On this week's episode of Geeks of Azeroth, Day of the Dead hits World of Warcraft, Warlords of Draenor is only two weeks away, and there's possibly an ex uh, a convention happening next week, I don't know. And more on this week's episode of Geeks of Azeroth. Welcome to the show. My name's Tarly, and I am all over the place today with trying to set up this stream. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're there. We're there now. We're, we're, we're finally here. Uh, and with me is Tom, or Britza, or whatever you want to be called today. How are you doing? Tom? I'll go. Yeah, I'm not too bad, thanks. <laughs> not too bad. It's, um, it's getting very cold here in the UK. Very, very cold. It's very, very dark. And um, we see the sun for about... 30 minutes it seems <laughs> especially in the especially in the north it's less than that it's about 10 minutes so yeah we're all we're all inside which is great i had to totally unrelated topic decided it was the uh the time of year to to buy a next gen console <laughs> went with an xbox one felt dirty as i left the store but no other otherwise all good all good what about yourself um well it's actually rather cold here too you know we've had quite a warm october and now it's the first day of november and oh let's turn on the cold <laughs> perfect time for warlords mm -hmm. yes perfect time to be sitting inside <laughs> as you notice uh zul is not with us today uh but that's okay he's with us in spirit as always we love you we love you <laughs> the awkward let's move on to our first uh topic of the day Day of the Dead hits World of Warcraft. Now, this is a one-day-only type of holiday that they do, so by the time a lot of you will listen to this show, it'll already be over. Um, does, Tom, have you ever participated in the Day of the Dead events? I feel, that, <laughs> I feel like we've now got to talk about it in the, the past tense, <laughs> even though it's not over. Um, no, I, I haven't before. I mean, the, the interesting thing is, is I, I didn't know about this until... I read the topic today, uh -huh. so um, yeah, it just shows how much I keep up to date. But it's—I um, don't know if you feel the same way, but there are a lot of collectibles for the end of an expansion. It just seems like there's more collectibles being thrown into the game now than any other time, and I, I, I'm trying to work out why, if anything, as if it, as if we're trying to hold on to something <laughs> from uh, from myths or something like. But it's not stuff inherent to myths because it's all brand new stuff. So. I don't know. I I just feel like it's a bit of a freebie Friday thing going on. But I think they're really trying to fill up everybody's toy box, is what it seems like to me. <laughs> <laughs> They've created this new feature. It's like, oh, let's fill it up. Let's go. Uh, yeah. I mean, did, did you get involved with it? Uh, not really. You know, I I'm more depressed that it's another year gone by and no headless horseman mount. You know, yeah, despite same. the fact of running that on all of my alts every day, I feel like that's statistically impossible at this point. But. Uh, Tarly does not complete all the things, apparently. No, you have you have to fail at something. <laughs> I do, and it is the Halloween event. <laughs> but saying that, I think um, I think it'd be nice if um, well, actually, no, it breaks the theme a bit. Like, Headless Horseman's inherent to this sort of Halloween period, but I, I was about to say maybe it'd be cool if these sort of seasonal bosses made sort of um, oh, what's the phrase I'm looking for, like. Uh, little appearances minor appearances in things um throughout the year maybe but i guess that kind of defeats the point of them you know like if you were doing a dungeon and then you heard the headless horseman going overhead and that sort of stuff <laughs> i always have a bit of nostalgia when i when I, the halloween event comes along because i, I first started mm -hmm. playing world of warcraft around a halloween event and i always thought that was just part of the game i'm like what is what is this because you'd spawn up in the starting zone and hear him cackling and throwing fire on the you know the starting area of villages and so there's always yeah, that like, little what is bit this? of nostalgia there. <laughs> World of Firefighters. That's why I need his <laughs> mount. I need that mount. <laughs> You'll get it. You remember, they've just announced that World of Warcraft is going to go on until 2024. So you've right. got 10 years. <laughs> but eventually, you think down the line they'll change the holiday events at one point? Maybe? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. That'll but become still... like a legacy achievement and it won't be available anymore. <laughs> they'll take the mount out of the year you get it <laughs> yeah uh all right so uh yeah i never really participated in day of the dead it just never seemed to be much of anything going on really just kind of a 
little quest giver, but it seems like there's more going on this year, so it may be worth checking out. How, I guess, on a sort of linked topic, do you think, uh, how do you think content-wise people are at the moment, sort of post 6.0 release? I mean, do, have we got back to that stage of there's nothing to do Yeah, Kind of, but in a way that it, we're getting so close to Draenor at this point that it, everyone's feeling hyped and everybody's mm -hmm. doing like killing Garrosh again to get their heirlooms and you know that, that's how I've spent my last couple of weeks is getting heirlooms for my characters and surprisingly yeah. easier than you think it is they made heroic Garrosh so easy so um oh really you've been hitting hitting him heroic yeah <laughs> oh, wow. so um which is normal but you know it with the name changes still <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible um but yeah uh getting heirlooms is a lot easier than I thought it would be. I've gotten one for my DK and my monk at this point. Need one for my mm -hmm. hunter, but um, yeah. So I, I I don't feel like that boredom. I mean, maybe for some people, but I, I but I feel like the hype. We're getting so close. There's a lot more people want to do before it goes away, kind of a thing. That's it. I th I think even going up to days. We talked about this before about the days leading up to Warlords. I think people are going to be under more pressure to see stuff before it switches over or before we kind of lose our control over what's happening but it's i just it's just curious that um that you know obviously we've got all this content extra content coming out and uh, that's seasonal but at the same time we're literally what uh, 10 days something like that 10 11 days 12 from days. 12 days oh so close now <laughs> so close yes i can hardly wait Moving on, um, speaking of things that uh, that you need to do before they stop, uh, the Warlords of Draenor beta is ending November 3rd. That is this coming Monday, probably, you know, the day after this video hits YouTube and the podcast hits wherever it goes. Um, so if you're a beta participant, unlike us, thanks, Blizzard, mm. <laughs> you'll want Cheers. to get everything out of the way and... That's just more consolation that, hey, we're almost there because the beta's over. <laughs> I don't... I don't I, oh, no, I, I don't know how I feel about the beta now. I used to feel a bit bitter that people were in it and I wasn't, but just turn it off now, Blizz. Mm -hmm. But uh, I actually did have the opportunity to finally play beta content. Um, aside from mm -hmm. last year, BlizzCon, uh, a friend of mine has had the beta and he got into it very recently which is funny that it's ending um so i went to his house played on a level 100 death knight and then i was like you know what? i don't want to play anymore i don't want to spoil the content for myself <laughs> and that's it do you think that's that's the benefit we've had over not being in the base is that i i, I would have hated to play the first couple of days of mm -hmm. warlords and just felt like i was repeating myself yeah because you kind of get that fatigue especially considering we're going to run probably several alts through it well from what i've heard the the leveling content is so good that you don't get burnt out of it and i hope i'm not being over promised there but <laughs> we'll find out well, yeah we will <laughs> but yes uh definitely uh, finish up whatever you wanted to do in the beta if you are playing the beta because that comes to an end on november 3rd um more news in wow uh that happened on the beta recently blizzard has disabled the anti-exploit uh experience cap mechanic that they put in place and basically what this mechanic did was if you were grinding mobs for experience uh just repeatedly killing the same thing over and over again in an area once you killed a certain amount and this would kick in at about five minutes of doing so um you would start losing the amount of experience you're getting by like 90 percent it was kind of ridiculous and uh Blizzard ultimately decided to take this mechanic out of the game, which I'm quite thankful for, and I'm sure a lot of people who just grind by killing mobs are thankful for as well. What do you think about this? I think... The thing is, I'm... I, I can't remember when this was introduced, this system, but if you remember during the world first race for Mists, there was a bit of controversy because I, I can't remember names, but one guy managed to go... Um, into, and I'm having another name block. What's the bottom left zone of Pandaria? Dreadways. Uh, Dreadways, yeah. I think someone managed to go into Dreadways and 
them and they got four other people to literally keep hitting the same mobs over and over again. It's sort of these these sort of mobs. Uh, it was the, like some sort of dark. I can't remember anything actually. The dark shaman or something like that. Those sort of NPCs. Yeah. And they just hit them repeatedly and just went straight from eighty five to ninety doing that. And because it was seen as an exploit, um, that person wasn't deemed world first at the time. And then later. Much later, Blizzard, I think, reversed it mm-hmm. and said that we have to accept that they did do it because they technically used the system as it was allowed. Um, so I think when it comes to things like that, I I can see why there is an anti-exploit system. I can't imagine anyone has exploited mobs to the extent in, in sort of the normal state of play. I've never experienced it to the extent where my XP is hitting you know, 10% because I'm hitting the mobs so often. I mean, usually you're, you're questing, you kill 10 of something and then you'll probably never kill that mob again. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but at the same time, if you do want to level that way or you do see something you can use, then I guess, should you really be penalized for it? Right. I, I think that's where Blizzard has to draw that line. Like, yes, people can exploit it, probably find like a certain mob that spawns a lot and has a lot of experience. Uh, but how many people are actually going to do that as opposed to just people who are killing a lot of mobs while they're questing? Mm. You know, so I, I can see where the idea came from, but I, it makes more sense that they took that out, in my opinion. Ian Hazakostis was the one who sort of released the um, statement on this one, and he said that they're going to disable the function in its entirety, and they're going to look into a much more narrowly targeted approach if and when we reintroduce it. So this thing could be back. But, I mean, what would you think would be a, perhaps a better system for controlling, exploiting game mechanics? Um, a giant titan flies down from the sky and smites your character with a thunderbolt. That might be overkill. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, that's... <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I mean, because it... it... I mean, again, it made, the idea made sense. It's just really hard to ha- punish the people who are exploiting without punishing the people who aren't. So the Blizzard has... I, I'm not a game designer. I don't I don't know these things. <laughs> I don't know. Do you, do Maybe, you have an idea in mind? I mean, I, unless you could do some sort of phased respawning system where after you start killing so many of the mobs, they start respawning less for you. Um, maybe. But then isn't that the same thing? Because you're only replacing quantity with, mm-hmm. the, you know, quantity of appearance, I guess. And that kind of idea would be really hard to implement. You'd have everybody that every single player would be in a different phased instance, and mm. be really weird. Oh no, my poor Mac. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. don't know actually. I guess See, <laughs> this is probably the one time we haven't got a suggestion for Blizzard. Right. <laughs> That's why we won't get hired. Yeah, because the one question we can't answer, and that's that's why Blizzard won't hire us, because you have to answer all the things. Exactly. <laughs> but hey, it may be back, so we'll see. But it it I did find it interesting they're taking it out just as we're about to hit a new expansion. Yeah. Um, and maybe, I mean, the only reason I can see people exploiting this is during the the world first. So why why not keep it until two weeks into Warlords? But then I don't know. I don't know, we could be a week. Well, because I want to be level 100 on three characters by the weekend, Tom. That's why. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. But then you've got all the cloaks and then all the heirlooms and you've got three level 100 characters and me and Zool will be sitting there and we've barely got through the portal because there's 100 people collecting the same three things in our zone. Oh, that was the worst, that was the worst part of Burning Crusade. Anyways, bad memories. <laughs> Okay, uh, moving on. Unless you have one more, any more to talk about on that subject? No. All right. All done. So, uh, moving on. Uh, we've had a little bit of clarification on the uh, lockouts for Mythic Raiding um, and Rygarius. Right? Is that how you say his name? Mm-hmm. Yes. He, yeah, I think so. Blue posted, answered some questions here. So I'll go ahead and read that quickly. I've seen some confusion over Mythic Raiding lately and wanted to clarify. Mythic Difficulties Lockout works differently than other Raiding Difficulties, Raiding Normal and Raid Finder Normal and Heroic. Uh, in Mythic Difficulty, you are bound to the Raid ID. This means if you join a Mythic Raid, defeat the first boss, therefore binding you to the Mythic Raid ID, and leave, you'll return to the same Raid. If the Raid continues on and defeats bosses 2 and 3 while you are gone, you will return to the Raid with those bosses already defeated. 
For that reason, it is important to stick together with the same group of people as much as possible for Mythic difficulty. When joining a Mythic raid that's already in progress, read the notification box that pops up carefully. It will let you know how many bosses have already been defeated and ask for a confirmation to be saved to that raid. It's something, if something's not adding up, you can refuse to be saved and be teleported out without being saved. This is a very cool implementation for Mythic raiding in that more implies the difficulty that Mythic is going to be. Um, again, just reiterating the point I've made before, that it's going to be the hardest content in the game, so it wants you to stick with the people that you're going in from beginning to end of that raid. And, and why wouldn't you, I guess? I mean, if it's the hardest content, a huge element of that is going to be team chemistry and that sort of... Uh, that team dynamic that obviously gets you through all the problems and the sort of team that can understand each person's role and things like that. You need that. You're going to need that at the highest level. Myth is going to be harder than anything we've ever really encountered. So, um, you know, people who might say, well, I'd like to be able to join a different team. You'll, you'll, this can't be something you can dip in and dip out with because otherwise you're just going to have people endlessly wiping and then you're literally a step away from breaking it down to an LFR approach and you mm -hmm. you don't want that. Right. You don't want that. Um, cause especially with Group Finder, uh, rating is going to be more LFR-like, especially for some groups who do just hop in and out of different boss fights with different people and they really don't want that for Mythic. They still want to retain that this is hard, this is a group of friends that you have to be with or a group of people you've known for a while or get to know, but you're going to need to know these people and communicate well. And so that's why they're keeping it this way for mythic. I think that's a good thing. Yeah, no problems at all. What's the, unless I, I've missed it, what's the quota for having a, a guild, not a guild, sorry, a, a raid ID, a, a scribe, like how many people has it got to be to sort of keep, I'm probably not explaining this very well. No. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not at all. If you've got a group of 20, yeah. and, well, they use this, they say six, six, uh, two people step out on the boss and six are replaced, and the raid continues on to cool. Never mind. Never mind. I won't ask. I'm just wondering, actually, no, no, I will ask, because I need to get to the bottom of this. If you've got, how, I'm just trying to work out how many, no, never mind. Never mind. Math problem. The basic, explanation for this is if you join a mythic raid kill a boss mm. you cannot join a mythic raid with another group of people you are bound to that one raid id with the person who was running the raid you cannot join a different instance of that raid you have to be in the same group to continue so that one say one person drops out of that 20 mm -hmm. and joins a, and say they clear three bosses and that one person drops out and then the next day joins a group of 19 who have never touched any of the bosses. That, pers that one person cannot join that other group. They have to stick with oh, the people right. they were raiding with that week. Okay, that's fine. That's making sense now. And if the group continues on, kills three more bosses, that person can still join in and join in their lockout, but it can only be that same group, no other group. And any new people that join in get bound to that raid group as well and their lockout. That's fair enough. The reason it confuses me though is it's 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 literally the complete opposite to LFR now. <laughs> it's, just, yes. it's the complete opposite. So in a world where you can just jump in and jump out of anything, mm -hmm. even cross servers, the, the I think the very idea of going back to almost vanilla star raiding, almost like a an extreme version of vanilla star raiding. It's not a case of you should really go with your guild. It's a case of you, you will be to. going with this. You have to go with the same people the exact same people not a different bunch of people the exact same people that's an extreme version so but hey i guess you know it's play hold or go home mm -hmm. <laughs> get out <laughs> do you think like how, that how do you think that's going to sit with not the high-end raiders but sort of medium-sized guilds and things like that do you think it's going to be easy to sort of keep the same 20 people I think me going to those regular Well, I think medium-sized guilds are going to be doing normal and heroic for a long time. True. Yeah. Um, like heroic will be their heroic rating, you know, and that, mm -hmm. that'll feel like an accomplishment to them. It certainly will for me. Um, you know, I've kind of just decided Mythic probably is outside of my schedule range due to work mm -hmm. and everything. So 
I think a lot of people will be content to do normal and heroics and not mythics and mythics will be for that group of people who are dedicated, who have the hours and hours and hours to try and kill these bosses every week. Um, and mythic mm -hmm. bosses will probably push their way into the medium, you know, more casual or less hardcore guilds when the next raid is out or when more people have more and more gear. And then people no, will adapt to it. People will have to thin their raid sizes anyway. So. It's perfect, really, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hold right. on, please. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Um, so everybody may or may not know this, that uh, next week uh, there's a tiny little event happening down in Southern California, a little part of uh, Los Angeles known as Anaheim. Um, it's BlizzCon 2014. Uh, <gasps> <laughs> BlizzCon 2014 is storming Anaheim Convention Center next Friday? Yes, a week from yes. yesterday. We are so I close. I hope you know that because you're supposed to be there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, it's coming and it's coming soon. Very excited. Um, let's just first kick off with it. Predictions. Predictions for BlizzCon 2014. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, in general, for Blizz, Blizzard? Um <laughs> I, I think it's just going to be something new for everything. It, there's n no question about that. You're just going to... This is a busy time for Blizzard. Um, new IPs, mm -hmm. new expansions have... Uh, well, with Diablo have just come out recently, speaking. Um, you're on the cusp of Warlords. And StarCraft 2, it's no, it's no secret that Legacy is going to be announced there. Mm -hmm. So... And you've got Heroes of the Storm, Hearthstone. Uh, it's it's going to be massive. And I think Blitz is in a very strong position where they they have managed to save enough back to show off. And I, I think probably it's, it's, it's going to be one of the best BlizzCons ever. And I honestly think it's it's such a strong... It's looking like it's going to be such a strong performance from BlizzCon, uh, Blizzard. Sorry, I think it may well be the strongest BlizzCon maybe for a year or two to come as well. Mm -hmm. I think you, you've just got so much coming out right now that there's, there's, there's not, there's nothing that you don't, you want to miss really. Absolutely. I feel like, uh, heroes of the storm is going to have a huge presence this year, even more so like it had a big presence last year with its name being officially unveiled and the big cinematic. But I feel like this year it's going to be even stronger because we're going to be closer to its beta. They're getting more and more people playing it. Um, so I think they're really going to be pushing Heroes of the Storm this year as well as uh, StarCraft. Though, at this point, I thought we would have some registered trademark like Legacy of the Void or something that we could confirm a new announcement for, uh, for this week. But we have nothing. There's been no secrets, no secret names unveiled, stuff like that. So kind of going in this blind as far as anything new being announced. Um, I think everything that gets announced will already be at least known somewhat like Legacy of the Void. There's been no official announcement before, but everybody knows it's coming. Yeah, I think I see. I mean, it's an unofficial title, isn't it? I don't think it's been confirmed that mm -hmm. it will be called. But these things are confirmed by uh, company registrations. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I can't remember where they register them. It's like Sweden or Norway or something <laughs> like that, or Denmark. Yeah somewhere there so you never know that it might come out literally a day or two before blizzcon but yeah you're, you're right there's um i think here's the storm is going to take a, a pride of place at the, yeah. at the whole event um you know there'll be a lot of emphasis on hearthstone too you know where that's going you know more cards probably i would expect <laughs> <laughs> more money oh. and, and i completely at this point i'm taking back what i said you know like a month or two ago uh, i don't think we'll hear anything about a new wow expansion uh with you know, Warlords right like a week later. I, I, I think that would just take a lot off of that. So, w uh, Warcraft will actually take a back seat, I think, this expansion. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to agree with you, actually. I think, because you're right, Blizzard's in a catch-22 where they can't announce the next thing, but we know everything about the Warlords anyways. Yeah. Um, it, it's, um, it's, it's too much for them. But at the same time, I guess you don't... Everything that War Warcraft announces takes away from some of the others potentially. Mm -hmm. So I guess if you want to really show off your IPs, 
you kind of want your main game. It's it's done as well as it can. It's about to announce a new expansion. You're right. Let it just sit back and let the others spend some time in the light. Now I feel like we could possibly hear about an expansion for Diablo three. Um, I don't know if they're going second expansion or not. Um, and if they did, I don't think they would show anything aside from a title. I think I, that's it. I, I wouldn't expect more than a title or uh, a hint cinematic. Maybe mm-hmm. um, I haven't played. I have certainly haven't played the second expansion, the first <sighs> expansion. Sorry, um, I'm playing through the original Diablo three mm-hmm. at the moment. But saying that, you never know. They've just had the console releases, so I guess they've got more of a market to appeal to now in terms of consumers. Maybe so they'll a reason. Just throw out here. Starcraft Ghost is actually still a thing. Go have fun. That would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you have this thing about believing Blizzard are just lying about cancelling games. I do. <laughs> and Titan is still happening. You know, it's all just... Exactly. They've got them all in the basement <laughs> working on them. They're just waiting for BlizzCon to throw them all out. <laughs> I, I mean, it would be cool. Yeah, it would be. Um, I mean, it just feels like Blizzard this year is lacking the big announcement. Uh, because there's always, you know, something big to talk about. Well, it, well, the music act isn't going to be as special as we hoped. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm actually, uh, I'm at least going to see it this year, as opposed as yeah. opposed to just walking out on uh, Blink One Eighty Two. If <laughs> um, Metallica, at least, if they play their old stuff, I'll be happy. So, mm. um, it's quite an interesting mix. <laughs> um, but they recently announced, and here I'll show you guys the page on World of Warcraft's website. Um, celebrating 10 years of World of Warcraft. There's a huge anniversary event happening Friday night at, from 8.30 to 10 p.m. Uh, California time. Um, this is really cool. Uh, it's all taking place outside of the convention center in between different areas of the hotels and stuff. There's uh, food trucks and a main stage featuring Songhammer, uh, a cool band that played BlizzCon last year. Um uh, Another area featuring tattoo artists and photo booths, and then a DJ in another area. So it's this huge, huge celebration uh, for World of Warcraft, and you don't have to have a ticket to attend. So, Zool, if you're watching the stream right now, uh, you should join us for this party. I know you can make it down, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's already in his car. He's on his way. <laughs> Next week. Not, not you know, <laughs> not now. I, I'm curious as well, just like... Um... Alex Ziva is that is this tattoo artist a permanent tattoo artist or like <laughs> I hope temporary so. stuff? Me, me being tattooed, <laughs> just would... having like Bromlock writ, you know, tattooed on your arm somewhere. That'd <laughs> yes, be amazing. That would be. I'm assuming it's temporary tattoos, um, or you'd have a lot of drunk people making mistakes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming there's going to be alcohol involved, as there always is at the BlizzCon parties. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You don't want to wake up and find like uh, like Mike Morheim on the back of your neck or something like that. <laughs> uh, uh, but I, I'm really excited for this. Uh, there's going to be. Mm. I'm hoping there'll be a lot of the WoW community will show up for this, especially the people who couldn't get BlizzCon tickets, because uh, you can just show up outside the convention center and it's like a whole other convention. Um, that's it's it, and it's it's. <laughs> It, and it's a great, you, like you just said, it's a great mixing point for people who are going to BlizzCon, but at the same time, it, people who can't attend because they haven't got tickets um, to attend the event live, you know, obviously you can you can go to this. This is this is sort of the people's BlizzCon, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, if you can make it, definitely go because I'm sure there's going to be as much going on outside as there are as there is inside. Mm-hmm. There's no reason they'll probably have screens up, I imagine, as well. Right. So you'd probably right. be watching the same stuff they they stream. So you're not missing out on that. If anything, you're getting away without yeah. paying for the virtual ticket. Because according according to that uh, to the schedule, uh, around eight thirty to ten is just um, you'd be missing out on the talent contest if you're at this wild party. Um, so that's kind of, I'm kind of torn there, but only for a little bit. Um, mm. Uh, so I may do the talent contest and then go to the party, for instance. Um, but otherwise, there's just the tournaments going on, and it's not the finals. The finals are the next day. So uh, you'd only be missing the talent contest, and I would assume that they would have screens to that outside as well. So Yes, definitely. Yeah, definitely. If you live in the California area, you should definitely check it out. It'll be a great way to experience the big Blizzard community without having to actually go inside to the convention. 
Um, exactly. Exactly. And, uh, you know, why Why not? Mm-hmm. Why not? You know, what's the worst that could happen? You wake <coughs> up and you've got a... Come on. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to join the, the show after BlizzCon. He's got this tattoo on the right side of his face. It's like the hangover. <laughs> but it's ha- half of his face will be Mike Morheim. <laughs> Just the Mike Morheim face on your face. That's, that'd be brilliant. <laughs> I hope to hear a big challenge accepted from Zool on our chat room. <laughs> uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> what about the, what about the uh, days themselves? I mean, we there's this big two and a bit hour gap on the friday that a lot of people are worrying about because the, there's an app that's come out as well mm-hmm. um so if you are going to blizzcon or if you're going around to yeah, that party i have already made curious, my schedule <laughs> yeah exactly you can and but this this two hour gap um just after the opening ceremony where it's on the main stage and the panel stage it's just quiet for two hours while the Warcraft Arena matches, the Hearthstone Championships kickoff, and the um, uh, StarCraft Global Finals pre-show kicks off. So I just wanted to ask you, Tali, really, do you think that this two-hour, two-and-a-bit-hour gap is to give those esports arenas the chance to get some attention, start getting people to view them without competition from you know the games themselves? Or... Do you think something's going to come in at the last minute and sweep everyone away? It's really hard to tell. Um, I, as far as the schedule goes, I can't really see Blizzard adding in something like a whole new thing to the schedule like last minute because, mm-hmm. you know, people like me, they're planning out their day ahead that's of time. So if they add in a whole new like game or something that's going to take up this time block, that would throw people's schedule off for what they're already planning. But it's it, it's still possible. I think it is more likely that they're trying to actually push people uh, to see the uh, PvP events for all their games, um, especially WoW, because uh, the the arena tournament last year there weren't a whole lot of viewers until the very final game, and they may be trying to push more people to go watch that. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I, I think that's spot on. Or for to be honest, people then. like me, that'll be when I run outside to the food trucks, grab my food, and then go back in. <laughs> I imagine as well. I, I don't know 100%, um, Can, but I'm... <laughs> sorry? Just a heads up for people who are going. Convention food inside is ridiculously overpriced, and the lines are long, and they do not take cards, so you'll get up to the front of the line and be like, I don't have cash. I'm screwed. <laughs> just go outside. Go to the food trucks. Their food is delicious. They take cards, and there you go. <laughs> there we go. We should have got some sponsor money out of that. Right. Sponsoring <laughs> the food trucks that show up. <laughs> Fighting for the little man. Uh, but do you think that... I, well, sorry, I don't, it's not a question of do you think. It's, I guess, that that gap, so to speak, with the virtual tickets. I imagine it's going to allow them to be streamed themselves or they're going to have their... Well, no, they'll have their own stream channel. So I imagine... How, how's that going to work? Do you think... Because StarCraft will probably have its own one, right. naturally. Um, Hearthstone usually has its own one. Do you think... I'm just wondering how the streams are going to work. So you probably, if you if you've got your virtual ticket and you're watching the BlizzCon stream, it probably cuts the arena matches. Right. I well, I'm sure there'll be separate channels for everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one year I did the virtual ticket, which was two BlizzCons ago, um, yeah, there was a channel for every tournament that was on at the time. Which there wasn't the Heroes of the Storm and Hearthstone, but uh, I could switch between WoW and StarCraft pretty quickly, as well as what was happening on every other stage. So. Um, yeah, I assume they'll just have it on every single tournament that's happening on its own channel. Fantastic. The, I mean, there's always been you... the, uh, I would call it rather annoying commentary between the P- direct TV people that they hire. <laughs> they don't. Oh, see, right, yeah. They don't seem to know much about Blizzard, but they're there anyway, commentating the whole convention. That's always been my take from it. <laughs> I think I've, I think, I think I found my job. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, you should. <laughs> Work for Direct TV. <laughs> I just, I just, just, just go in and like I don't know anything about arenas, but hey, um, do you which which of the e uh, sort of matches are you gonna go and watch, or are you gonna try and watch all three as they're going around um, that two and a half hour gap? Uh, being a StarCraft player, I, I love watching competitive StarCraft players, especially <laughs> you know the, the final tournaments. So I'm um, I'm going to make sure I'm there for the final. Uh, the grand final of the StarCraft tournament, but I'm otherwise going to be jumping around. I love watching WoW arenas, and 
I love the fact that they schedule they didn't schedule the WoW final and the StarCraft final at the same time like they did last year. Um, so that'll be great. I'll get to watch the WoW final and the StarCraft final, but I'm really interested to watch the Heroes of the Storm uh, event that goes on between YouTubers. I think that's uh, cool. Is that on the Saturday? Uh, is that the one? Give me uh, uh, which... Pull up this. Oh, I know the one. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Like, I'm people so like just... Jesse Cox and Wow Crendor. I mean, that, that's who's playing, and I think that's very interesting instead of being a, you know, like a big professional team. Yeah, because you, you're going to enjoy it more. Because mm-hmm. I, I think that's always something with the, the live raid, for example. Um, we know it's Method versus Midwinter mm-hmm. uh, now, so um, people are getting very excited for that. Oh, but yes. I've never really been. So? Uh, I was just agreeing with you. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's. I was just worried I got it wrong there for a second, uh, but I've never really been a fan of the, or uh, rather, I've never really felt compelled to to watch the live raids because yeah. it's so. Um, I mean, it's it's a laugh sometimes, but it's very. Uh, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Uh, methodical and, you know, these are people who are going to even if, with this new content, they they've known it. And it's really sort of an exercise in which the better raider but like you say with these things by getting people who aren't pros but uh you know mm. well-known people in the communities for blizzard it's um it's going to be fun and uh, you're, you're going to be entertained and i think that's what blizzard really does well is it's the idea of just entertaining people rather than constantly pushing elite gaming i think that's the thing there's yeah. just a lot of elite gaming out there and i just mm-hmm. i'd love to watch people get absolutely decimated <laughs> yeah so i think the heroes jokes. i mean and this is kind of like the last year they had kind of a, a thing with heroes but it was more just mm-hmm. the developers playing against each other so i mean what how fun can that really be exactly <laughs> so yeah it, it'll be a lot more interesting to watch this year and hopefully it'll be commentated well um and that's what i loved about the hearthstone last year is we had a uh, total biscuit and um i hope i hope he comes back this year i haven't actually heard who's commentating hearthstone I don't think he will because he's, um, oh, right, he's right. recently he's... had surgery. Mm-hmm. Um, so he probably won't make uh, it to California this year. No. It's unfortunate. He might He might be there. I don't know where his current state is, but I would... That's the thing, though. You know, it's a BlizzCon. It's, it's a bit like you're, you're, you know, something like this bit like the Super Bowl. You just seem to have people coming out the walls. <laughs> right. uh, are, are you like, what are you doing there? And they're like, oh, now we've got Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt, you've been a big fan of... Right. Wow, Rina, so... <laughs> uh, I mean, and I would love to see more celebrity appearances. Like we had Conan show up last year out of nowhere. Mm. That, that was really cool. Um, it'd be cool to see more of that. Um, but moving Probably on, there, there, there's so much happening. Like you know, so many different parties and events. And if you are going, if you're going to be in the California area, there's a great website uh, that you should mm-hmm. check out. And I'm going to pull it up right now for the stream. Um, it is MRGL, and that would be MRGL.co slash events. Um, and I've got it pulled up right here, and it's got all the BlizzCon, anything related to BlizzCon happening. Mm-hmm. And so it's a great roundup to see where you can meet your celebrities, where you can go to after parties, stuff like that. And so we'll have a quick overview for you. November 5th, which would be, what day is November 5th? That is That's Wednesday. Thursday. That's before I even oh, get Wednesday, there. Wednesday, sorry. That's before I arrive in California. I should change my plane tickets. <laughs> um, there's the BlizzCon bonfire on the beach. Now, I'm super jealous now. I'm just now reading about this for the first time on the stream. Join a group of BlizzCon goers at the Huntington Beach for the annual BlizzCon bonfire. Huntington State Beach is at the end of Beach blah, 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 blah details details but apparently there's a bonfire where people going to blizzcon stand around play guitar roast marshmallows do bonfire things that sounds really so, fun <laughs> that that actually <laughs> sounds amazing actually <laughs> there's no other words to describe that no i it's, wish i was going a day earlier <laughs> it's seven hours of alcohol marshmallows and fire on, a on beach. the beach in Ca- southern the beach. california uh sounds lovely um well we know where you're going (laughs) i will not be there until november 6th unfortunately oh never mind but there's the whole there's the benefit dinner on november 6th from 6 30 a.m to 10 30 p.m i think the times are off there i believe it's 6 30 p.m to 10 30 (laughs) p.m 
if you're paying 700 quid for this ticket you get your money's worth <laughs> you turn up for a 14 hour event no i had uh, uh, my colleague who goes with me to blizzcon um he went to that event last year because that was the only ticket he could get because he missed his opportunity for the normal ones um so last year he went to that and he said it was very awesome he got to sit around a formal dinner and actually talk with mike morheim and ian heisekostas and all these uh, big name blizzard people um so if you're going to that uh, you'll probably enjoy it you get to have a fancy steak dinner have a beer with some of your favorite developers and great conversations will be had um, but for those of us who did not pay 700 dollars a ticket there are <laughs> other things that we can do on november 6th like world of podcasts at the hilton anaheim from 6 30 to 11 30 this is where a lot of the podcasters like myself and um i know convert to raid and the the instance and a lot of other people will be at world of podcasts in the hilton that is literally right next to the entrance to the convention so hard to miss i look forward to seeing a lot of people there um, as well as Wowhead's annual party, I will probably make my way over there at the Annabella Hotel. Um, that is where all the alcohol usually is, at Wowhead's party. I don't know what's going on, Wowhead. You guys like <laughs> alcohol. <laughs> They've got their priority straight. Mm -hmm. Definitely be over heading over there, as well as possibly the uh, TESPA, -E the TESPA meet and greet. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to be a college student, so actually I will not be there. But if you're a college student and want to meet some people, head over there also in the Hilton. Hilton is a big hotel. There's a lot of different things happening in there. <laughs> then on November 7th, I think BlizzCon is actually happening. <laughs> oh, yeah. That little thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Newegg is actually throwing a party this year on Friday night uh, from 6 to 1 a.m. in the House of Blues. Um, we own the night after party, so alcohol to be involved if it's going until 1 a.m., I, I believe I'm just going to have a hangover every day of the convention this year. You're going to wake up and it'll be over. See, I wasn't 21 when I went last year, so my alcohol consisted of my friend buying it at a gas station and then drinking in the hotel room and then going to the parties. Oh, <laughs> sneaking away. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, Friday night, November 7th, there will be CTR. the Convert to Raid uh, Signals Media bash uh their party last year was very hot because they were in a small room um i'm hoping it'll be better this year again in the hilton 7 to 12 uh, make your way there between partying for the world of warcraft party and then the after party of course with all the developers like to show up to and um even ghost crawler last year was quite drunk at the hilton after party so all of that and more, you can check it out. I've spent a lot of time going over this. We need to move on. Unless you have anything Definitely. else to add, Tom. No, I was just going to say there's loads and loads to do. I mean, mm -hmm. the if you basically, I would suggest, unless you're really, really, really keen for the bonfire, you yeah. probably want to be at the Hilton right. for the night of the 6th. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, no, you can. You can go to the bonfire on the 5th. You want to be at the Hilton for the 6th, probably. Right. Um, unless you want to go to the Wowhead party. And then it's pretty much all happening in the Hilton. So if you just stay in the Hilton every single night, <laughs> yeah. you will be guaranteed to be thoroughly drunk uh, and probably on every single photo from the event. So so again, that is mrgl.co slash events. You can check out everything that's happening in the area. It, there's going to be quite a lot and a lot to wrap your head around, especially if you're going to be party hopping like me. Moving on. Uh, discussion topic for the week are we all ready for warlords of draenor now that is coming again less than two weeks away at this point is everybody ready are you are you ready for this content Tom? no <laughs> <laughs> no well mentally i'm keen i'm i want it to happen mm -hmm. and i i if I'm, well, I say I want it to happen. I, I'm not prepared in the sense like if if they would say Warlords dropping tomorrow, I would be like, okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna touch it properly for a week because I'm just not. There's so much going on mm. in real life at the moment, so I'm really pleased in a way that it's got 12 days to go. But it, in game, I I guess I'm not not as ready as I could be. There's still a lot that I need to to learn. Um, mm. The in terms of my in time. Uh, in game time, I haven't spent an awful lot because um, it's it's mainly been trying to 
understand the changes to my character, get used to the item squish and just sort of hit old legacy content. So I think being thrown into something totally new, uh, new zones and everything, I'm just, I would just be hitting random buttons at this stage and just hoping for the best. So there's still a lot to do, but also I'm just like we've said earlier, I'm not quite ready to let go of the old content yet. And that it's a weird thing. You don't realize how, much you still want to enjoy something until someone's going to take it away from you um mm-hmm. and i think that's something i'm going to miss like all those runs I'm, I'm i'm trying to get those in not because i need any of the stuff but just because it was something i didn't get to try until very late in the game mm-hmm. and i in some ways there's other content uh from miss that i'd love to see because i never really got to got to experience it and if i go to this next expansion i probably will never see it yeah so but what about yourself? I I'm I'm pretty much ready. I would really like to finish getting my heirlooms that I want. Um, mainly on yeah. my hunter and maybe one for my druid. But um, mainly my three, I'd like to finish off. Got one for my DK and monk, but I really want one for my hunter. A hunter becoming one of my new favorite classes. So I'm really you know running Garrosh every week, but I've only got one more week to do so, or two more two more weeks to do so. Um, can I still get the next? Tuesday, not you know, this coming one, but the next one. I don't even know what the state within... of the game is on launch week. Oh, Tuesday. Because... No, because it wouldn't really change anything, would it? It'd just be the game so. going. No. no, I think you could. I think so. Um, but otherwise, I mean, I'm I'm more than excited uh, to play the new content. Um, and what I'm what I would say I'm most excited for in Draenor is. Uh, the new dungeons, honestly, the return of five-man content. Even though there's only mm-hmm. eight of them, one of them being a rehash. Rehash! <laughs> Even that being the case, there's still three more <laughs> than there was in this. Right, so, so um, I'm a bit excited for the return of difficult five-man content. Uh, five-man has always been one of my favorite types of content to do, um, especially when I don't have time to raid. So difficult five mans, definitely looking forward to that, as well as questing again, just and it being interesting. Mm. I've heard from so many people who have played the beta that questing is interesting and fun, so <laughs> I want to believe no, them. A... I'm sure it will be, but yeah, I agree with you totally there. I'm so ready to jump into this story. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that that is the thing that's driving me. I, I want to see this next chapter. You know, we joke about it, but seriously, I'm glad I haven't being in the beta because mm-hmm. i've got all of this fresh to experience we've had that teaser with the invasion quest line but it's i may so have, ready to see it i may have spoiled a little bit again i watched the second uh oh the second uh whatever in-game cinematic because i was like i need more and then i stopped halfway <laughs> through because it was already spoiling stuff for me i'm like oh no no i can't i gotta stop but again just to bring back how good the quality is of those in-game cinematics mm. i'm i'm really excited to play through the story without giving anything away did it did it spoil anything massively or did it no just it, it, it's just like i watched to the point of seeing all the warlords stand on the cliff like you kind of get from the the preview the initial announcement trailer oh yeah so and you see that happen in game and i'm like oh wow <laughs> so geez um excited for that um but do you have a plan? Do you know what you're going to be doing first once the expansion hits? Well, in one level, no, because I, I don't literally going through that portal. I mean, we talked about the we know what the zone looks like. Mm-hmm. We've seen I've seen some of the um, streams of the beta play and things like that. So I know roughly what's going to happen once we step through that portal. But beyond that and the map previews and some of the basic stories, the, the Lords of War um, hints and things like that. I genuinely don't know what's waiting and because you know in theory that it's very different to to know in theory what's going on than when you step into it and you're actually taking it on yourself so i think in terms of getting into the zones i'm just gonna wing it mm-hmm. but in terms of a long plan i just i think i just want to try and see as much of the story as possible the biggest problem i've always had with the expansions is you go through a zone, the story gets to start to get really, really interesting, and you've capped too high uh, because you've been doing dungeons as well and things like that. So, not to say that I'm like you, I'm I'm not really excited by the dungeons, mm-hmm. but for me, the key is just to see the story first yeah. time, uh, and then maybe on all, so I'll just 
plunging it up and heating it through that. So just really just get into the quest and get stuck in and just enjoy the story, really. I, I think I think too much about leveling, mm-hmm. like as a quantity. Yeah. But it's it's 10 levels. So in a way, I'm, I'm still, I don't know about you, but I'm still sitting there going, cool, this is, because we haven't had a 10 level expansion. <laughs> since uh, Wrath. <laughs> since Wrath. And yeah. that, that at the time was a long slog. And so I don't know if I'm ready for that long slog. So I've got to probably start researching and yeah. start looking at the zones and where I want to be in terms of levels and moving around and what quests I think might be more interesting for me and things like that. So, Well, you probably but... won't have to worry about that. I've heard that it's no, actually very true. linear as well. I mean, you've got 10 levels to get through five zones and it, it kind of really guides you. You do at least 90% of the quests um, and then you go on to the next one and really that other 10% is all the bonus objectives that exist so you can choose to do them or not. Um, but from my understanding, you can't actually go into the next zone until you are ready, like level ready. Um, so like those level requirements uh-huh. you see over the zones, you you actually have to be that level before you can go. Um, so that's an interesting approach, but apparently it just feels okay because you get you just kind of do the zone and then you're ready for the next one, level wise. So that's perfect. Yeah. So you you won't really feel confused or I don't know where to go. It kind of just guides you through mm. it. Um, which, you know, it's kind of, you know, you had multiple choice, like in Wrath, you could, two different starting mm-hmm. zones you could choose from, two di- you, there was always two different zones you could go to. So you might feel burnt out uh, once you get to leveling alts, um, but at least the first time through is going to be pretty cool, and you'll know where to go. It's great. It's perfect. But it's like they built this just to help me with my my extreme <laughs> problems with the game. Yeah. Like we need to help Tom through it. Um, but w- what about yourself? How going in? What what are you ready for? Now you've sport the entire story. What is part of it? <laughs> I, I, the story is something I'm so excited to experience through questing. Because um, I am a lore nerd, so I'm excited for more mm-hmm. in-game lore and, as opposed to having to go out and read other stuff to know what's going on. Um, mm-hmm. But my game plan is to once I'm. I'm going to try to get to 100 as fast as possible. I've got the launch day off of work, so my plan is to not sleep until I literally have to go to work that Friday. So it'll be a rough day of work, but I want to get to 100 as fast as possible. Um. (laughs) I mean, how long do we think it's going to take for, you know, yourself or me? Maybe I I call myself more of a standard player. I I went through miss in one sitting. And I know that sounds brutal, but I did. Um, and I've heard it's faster. Uh, Warlords is faster than Miss Leveling. So that, yay, I might get some sleep before going to work. <laughs> um, well, so you think you'll hit 100 before you have to go to work that Friday? I'm you hoping so. Um, I, I'm hoping Ow. it just kind of flows and goes by pretty quickly. Um, you know, hopefully maybe 24 hours of leveling. Because it, it, Mists of Pandaria took a genuine um, maybe two days or three, uh, mm. depending on how you approached it. And so, I mean, it, you, you'd you had to sit down and dedicate nine hours just to do level uh, 89. So, <laughs> Yeah. No, that's it's interesting because you I remember for some reason I'm getting this flashback to um, convert to raid when they when miss was launched and it took if i'm right forgive me if i'm wrong but it took them uh, a few days maybe even a a, a a week or something like that maybe to get to cap and i'm not saying you know podcasters uh you know automatically pro elites and they should all mm-hmm. do it in 24 hours or something right. like that but it's um it i think for me i i would be absolutely amazed if i was level 100 by the end of that weekend Right. I'd be actually incredibly impressed, but I, I have a much more casual approach to the game I, than from what people. I've heard. They they've made the leveling more of an approach to casual players who don't have as much time, and they can still feel like they get to 100 in a decent pace. So people who do go ham and try and do it quickly, they'll probably get there pretty fast. Is what I'm assuming. Um, so people so, who just want to get there over the weekend, that'll be an really achievable goal. Um, so are you going to literally walk through the portal, hit the quest, and then jump into between that and uh, yep. dungeons? My goal will be just, to do oh, like each dungeon once for the dungeon quests. Uh, le- main focus is on the garrison. I've heard that is a, the best way to get experience is you pop back into your garrison, set your hearth there. So that, that's, the, that's the goal. 
find the bug and then exploit it. Yes. <laughs> Once I'm 100, I plan to really, really focus in on my garrison, get it to tier 3 as quick as possible, uh, get ready for raiding, really, mm -hmm. uh, doing heroic dungeons. So that'll be my plan. Fantastic. Just win. That, that, that's, yeah. that's all I heard. I'm just going to win Warlords. Yeah. Uh, and I'll Simple. casually, over the next week or two, level up my Monk because um, that's going to be my primary PvP focus. I've got a team actually set set up. We're going to be doing 3v3s, climbing that ladder. So get my monk up there because I'm going to be the group healer. So that, that's, that's the goal. But also there are a couple games coming out that same Tuesday before Warlords launches. So once I'm level 100, I'll probably revert back and play those as well. <laughs> Just you do your cap mm -hmm. and then you don't play anymore. But saying no. that, you've got a while to wait. You've, you've got some it's, time. I mean, you, you you know just how crazy no, this November is as far as game launches. So mm. we've got that Tuesday. The Halo Master Chief uh, collection comes out uh, next yep. Tuesday, um, and then the week Which, after that, the yeah. revamp of Grand Theft Auto comes out. Both games I really want to play. So, <laughs> and I because I've now got an Xbox One, I can I've got Master Chief on my. Um, mm. Master Chief Collection on my agenda. Far Cry 4 comes out. Oh, right. Um, yeah, right. Not long, ah. <laughs> not long so after much. Warlords. So I, I think I may be like you. I might just try and push through and see if I can get to cap by the weekends. Really push myself. Mm -hmm. And then just sit back and wait for stuff to pick up in the endgame mm -hmm. community. Yeah, because raiding won't even be available until what, two weeks after launch? Is that what it is? It's, yeah, I think so. And then the... the um, we got the big event. Yeah, so that'll yeah. be fun. That's, so you've got that to play around with, but even then, it's something you can dip in and dip out of. Mm -hmm. So, which is how I've always played WoW. So, you know, that'll be nice. <laughs> At least you didn't say I'm going to cap and then I'm going to unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I'll probably go more ham once you know I find a guild that is still. Anybody listens to the podcast has a guild. Hit me up. I'm Alliance now. <laughs> and which server are you on? Kelthazad US. I would love to have a raiding guild, but. Yeah, or just a group that can add me on Real ID because, you know, you don't need guilds to raid anymore. <laughs> or if they see you floating around on launch day, mm -hmm. just just group up. Because I imagine that's going to be quite a, a a key thing. I mean, if the, if the dungeons are perhaps not quite tuned right, or maybe there is something you can take advantage of, you could probably do a couple of runs and mm -hmm. do a level in a short time. Mm -hmm. But hey-ho. <laughs> All right, well, on to our final segment of the show. The Heroes Call, where we make any shout-outs to anyone in the community or people who have contacted us or anyone that stands out to us. And uh, I'll start off by uh, wanting to do a quick shout-out to DX Racer. They make gaming chairs. They are fantastic, and I just picked up one this week, as you can see. And it is the most comfortable thing I have ever sat myself in. I didn't realize how terrible my posture was until I sat in this chair. <laughs> Sitting up straight is actually comfortable. Um, so yeah, if you want to check them out, it's dxracer.com. Uh, you may see a full review of this chair on our site, uh, later this week. I will try and get that posted, but I love this thing. So I wanted to shout that out during the podcast. What about you, Tom? I, uh, no one specific. I, as usual, I do want to thank everyone who has been listening, is listening right now at this very moment. And, um, you know, obviously we're show 16. We've got to BlizzCon. Mm -hmm. And um, I will also give a sort of future shout out because we meant, well, we'll mention our plans for next week. But if you are at BlizzCon, then obviously, you know, do give Tali a shout and, um, you know, tweet. You've got the, the Twitter at Geeks of Azeroth and just sort of really, you know, sh shout out to anyone in the community who wants to sort of join in the fun, really. That's what next week is all about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, you know, I'll be sitting with the rest of the team with the virtual tickets and genuinely i guess if you're going to blizzcon the shout out to you because uh, you're gonna have an absolutely amazing time and you're all gonna have fantastic tattoos yeah <laughs> absolutely um so i just want to thank everybody uh we're kind of wrapping it up maybe a little early maybe a shorter show but again there's not much news um but thank you for listening it might be next week yeah oh yes <laughs> uh so thank you everybody for listening um we will be doing our show as usual from next week but I will be in Anaheim, so you'll get live news from me from the convention floor as our normal podcast guys chime into me via Skype. 
I will, probably won't be there for the entire duration of the show. Just try to chime in with my thoughts while I am running all over the place, uh, as mm -hmm. is my usual at the convention. Um, so, but we will bring you updates as it is, as the rest of our group uh, sits down and talks about while they watch the live stream. Is that right, Tom? Yes, we're going to, obviously we can't broadcast the live stream because that would kind of be defeating Blizzard um, <laughs> in a sense. Uh, but we will be hosting some shows, uh, me and Zool and the rest of the team at Epic Geeks just to uh, talk about our thoughts because um, the rest of them, the rest of the team are all big Blizzard fans. Um, so we'll all just be talking about everything. So <laughs> we, there will be a, a WoW focused show. Uh, which means all will be in certainly, um, but there'll also be some Blizzard focused stuff. So if you are more interested in the Blizzard scene, um, then definitely tune in for those as well because we'll be talking about the updates as they happen. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it's going it's to be amazing. I, I literally, my brain hasn't computed that it's next week. It will get to Thursday, and I'll be oh, right, I've got to be home because <laughs> I've got to watch everything. And again, if you are going to be at BlizzCon and want to have a conversation with me about World of Warcraft, I will be at the World of Warcraft's party, uh, or the World of Podcast party, excuse me, at the Hilton from 6.30 to 11.30. I probably won't be there the entire time, but that is where you can definitely find me, uh, as well as many other podcasters. Um, if you want to watch our show regularly, it is on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, and Twitch. You can also catch us at Geeks of Azeroth on Twitter. Uh, you can find me personally at Tarly underscore pause with a Z. If you want to hit me up at BlizzCon, that would be a great way to get a hold of me. What about you, Tom? I have changed my name. I'm finally under the uh, the Twitter at Brits. I spelled B-R-I-W-O. Oh, sorry. No, I kind of I spelled it wrong. <laughs> at Britza, B-R-I-T-Z-Z-A underscore E-G. Um, because obviously Britza was taken, so I had to respell <laughs> it a different way. Well, there I you accepted go. defeat. You finally have your name, and you almost spelled your own name wrong on the show. Yeah, well, it's, it's a day of technical faults. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, you can always uh, contact the show with messages, questions, shout out uh, via geeksofazerothEG at gmail.com. Um, and remember to check out our show, plus other podcasts and reviews and tech stuff and blogs and many other things at epicgeeks.co.uk. Um, otherwise, you can check us out next week for our big BlizzCon episode. Everyone have a great week in Azeroth.